It's two minutes after the hour, 3 o'clock, WMSC Milwaukee, 91.7 FM Frontier Radio, the Big Sound downtown on the campus of the Milwaukee School of Engineering. And coming up in a few minutes, Terry Havel will be here with the Blues Drive. But in the meantime, we're going to be take, talking to New York-based uh, keyboardist and songwriter Jack Spann, who's playing at Liniments tomorrow night. And uh, we'll be talking to him after. Uh, we're going to kick things off with a song of his. But in the meantime, let's give you a little bit of... Uh, of the weather information, current temperature here at the downtown campus is 57 degrees, showers and a thunderstorm before 1 a.m. Patchy fog, low 47. Tomorrow, a chance of showers before 7 a.m. You know, the high temperature of 60 tomorrow night, a uh, chance of showers and thunderstorms before 2, low around 41. That's it for WMSC weather information. Here is a message from one of our sponsors supporting programming today on WMSC. And right after that is a track from uh, Jack Spann off of his latest Time, 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 Time. And the track's entitled Time. So we'll be right back. Don't go away. Support for WMSC is provided by your membership and Von Briesen and Roper SC, a Milwaukee-based law firm serving the needs of local, national, and international clients since 1904. The firm and its employees are dedicated to serving Milwaukee arts, charities, and nonprofit organizations. More at vonbriesen.com. For you, solve it if you can. What creature do you know that has three hands? What makes a good wine? What makes women weep? What rules rulers? What thing never sleeps? Oh, 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 that it is time, time. The second hand went first, then the minute thought he'd try. Pretty soon the hour hand had also gone by. And it's quickly rolling, rolling, and it quickly rolls and rolling, and it quickly rolling, rolling, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it quickly rolls and rolling, and it quickly rolls and rolling, and it's quickly rolling, rolling, yeah, yeah, yeah. The second that you try to stretch it, you won't catch it, I. Time, 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 time. And it's quickly rolling. Quickly rolling, rolling, and it's quickly rolling, rolling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve trillion years from now, when all things are done, time and motion will still be young. If you doubt me, look in any mirror. The person you just were has begun to disappear. That is time. And it's quickly rolling, rolling, and it's quickly rolling, rolling, and it's quickly rolling, rolling, yeah, yeah. And it's quickly rolling, rolling, and it's quickly rolling, rolling, and it's quickly rolling, rolling, I, I. Mr. Riddle Man, speak if you know, where, oh, where does all time go? I remember holding every day, through my fingers each slipped away, that was time. The second hand went first, the minute thought he'd try. Pretty soon the hour hand had also gone by. The second hand's a laddie, the minute hand's a thief. The hour hand is watching all the day spinning weeks. And it's quickly rolling, rolling, yeah, it's quickly rolling, rolling. And it's quickly rolling, 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 rolling. Quickly rolling. Rolling, rolling, 
It's music from Jack's band. Right here at WMSC Milwaukee, 91.7 FM, Frontier Radio. He will be playing tomorrow night at Lineman's and uh, making his Milwaukee debut. Yes? That's right, Tom. Awesome. <laughs> Jack, it's a pleasure having you in the studio. That is some uh, it's pretty some pretty provocative music. You're a uh, pretty fair keyboard player, my friend. Ah, well, um... You could I throw something at me. You. you could say I'm a well, damn I, good keyboard player. I, I, no, no I, seriously. I, I, I can take no credit for it, but I, I do, I'm really glad to be here in 91.7, which is like the hip station, so... Thank you. It's really good to be here, and thank you very much for having me. Yeah, and you're New York City-based yeah. singer-songwriter, uh, keyboard player. Mm-hmm. And where'd you get your start? Uh, well, I got my start by playing on street corners in St. Louis or in like bars. Um, you were busking. You were busking oh, with yeah. keyboards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> How do you I, busk I, with the keyboard? <laughs> or were you a guitarist keyboard? Because uh, <laughs> <since, laughs> I know you're a multi instrumentalist, and I, I, yeah, I, I associate keyboard. Since, you as a keyboard player. Since so. you brought this up, I used to have a 1965 Chevy panel wagon, and I had um, one of those 63 note acoustic piano things that I could carry around and so we used to go to Laclede's Landing grab my piano put it out in the street and play but you know that <laughs> was 20 pretty, years ago so I, I don't remember I barely remember those days, so. that's pretty cool um, but yeah but, uh, but along the way you get your start how do you end up in New York City from uh, from uh, St. Louis well I actually um, so uh, not that this is worth anything but I ended up getting a music degree at Webster University in St. Louis um, and at that point I <clears throat> had been working as a uh, accompanists for dance classes and when I graduated I got hired so I ended up spending another seven years at Webster University spending summers doing summer stock and I eventually it's a long story but I eventually got a quote-unquote equity card um, and ended up moving to New York in 1998. But before um, the move to New York getting that gig that seven-year thing that's a pretty good gig for somebody just getting out of music school is it not? Yeah I mean I it wasn't I, bad right? Yeah, yeah, but I mean it probably you, was what you didn't want to do either too right? There, well I'll put it this way um, if you're a heterosexual male uh, 90% of the people in ballet classes are women so and if you're a homosexual male 10% of the men in ballet classes are men. Yes. <laughs> Well, well then, so you can't go wrong either way. Yeah. Yes, um, but yeah, so that's 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 what happened to me. Um, and I, you know, I played in bands. Um, growing up in St. Louis, you're constantly exposed to blues. So probably by the time I was twenty, twenty one years old, I had uh, opened up already for like Albert King uh, and Billy Gales, who I had a long relationship with. Like all these great blues artists from St. Louis um, in a former era, you know. Um, and yeah, and so I, I was just really lucky. I got exposed to good musicians. I ended up playing in a band that won, you know, blah, quote unquote contests. Um, and we did all original music. And then eventually, if that's enough of my background in St. Louis for you, it is enough for me. Um, uh, no, we can move on. Now you're in New York City. <laughs> that's all right. So you get, yeah, out of so the, you get your card, you go to New York City. Yeah, so I went to New York City and. Um, one of the first things I did was I went into, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with New York, but Cafe Figaro used to be there. It's not like a drugstore, like everything else in New York is becoming a drugstore. Um, but uh, my uh, companion at the time had a job waiting tables, and at that point was lucky enough to get offered a job working for Chip Taylor, who wrote Wild Thing, Angel of the Morning, and had his own record company, Trainwreck Records. Um, wow. Um, which has since closed, but but Chip is still active. Um, I was then introduced to John Fotania, who was uh, uh, played uh, guitar for Van Morrison for years, and he played on Moon Dance, everything after the Bang era, basically. Sure. John introduced me to a bunch of people, um, and I ended up playing on two of John's solo CDs and getting introduced to like a whole wider crowd of people in New York City. I was really lucky. Um, but were you, just, were you performing as Jack's band through all this, or were you mostly doing sessions at the time? Uh, well, I actually, the first thing I did when I got there was get a job in a piano bar. Um, so there's these, and New York City has, has these weird piano bars. Uh, you go in, uh, most of the people that work there are like off, uh, out of work, quote unquote, Broadway performers who <laughs> are just looking for a job. But in the meantime, they were making money selling drinks, and um, all the waiters sing, all the waitresses sing, and you have to play like every Billy Joel song. But in my the one world. friend said, if you want to go see the best piano bars in the world, you go to New York because of the people that are out of work in Broadway. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah, it's right. the greatest piano bars in the world. 
are you know, in New York and, City. And Tom, it's so weird because I, I talked to, like, John Fletcher. Not that said, that's a bad thing. No, either. no, no, it's great. But because just, he was, my friend was gainfully employed and, and you know, living in the village, and he was happy as hell. Yeah. Um, I, I think New York has changed in the last 15 years. I, I don't think it's quite the music city that it used to be. Sure. Apparently, like, in the days of the Ramones and Blondie and all those All guys, those, yeah, whatever. You know, that's... Um, and it seems like ever since I've been there, it's become a bit more of a theater town. And Times Square is now like Disney Square. And um, <laughs> But it's, it's still a wonderful place to live. And yeah. I, I love it there. I mean, it's still there all these years later. So when does it become Jack's band and you're just outperforming your own original music? Or? Well, all right. So so I, I started a band um, and around, around 2007, went out and played. Um, right around the time I got offered a job on a Broadway show. Uh, the show War Horse on Broadway at Lincoln Center in New York City and um, playing this character named Songman um, and I walked into the audition on the first day and the guy behind the music director said can you play accordion and I lied and said yeah sure <laughs> and in my mind it was just a sideways it's like a sideways piano, sideways like, piano sure, no, problem. no problem <laughs> so I ended up getting this job and um, and you took the accordion home and learned it that night yeah I did I, I basically yeah. did I ran an accordion I, I got the gig um <laughs> So then, you know, flash forward to a year and a half later, and it's like, I love making this kind of money, but I can't wait to get out of the show because it's eight shows a week, and it's driving me crazy. Sure. And I'm it's writing all these songs, work. and I, you know, I mean, you've got a CD. He's got a CD. Everybody in the world has a CD, but I finally want to get my CD out. So um, it was def- definitely a goal to do this. Yeah, yeah so it was, it was a huge goal. Um, and then can I go ahead with the rest of the story? Absolutely. So. Um, yeah, man. And it. It's a good one. I love well, really yeah, like yeah, it. It's, it's uh, yeah, and I, I'm not story. trying to glom off of anybody else's fame, but I was sitting around my apartment one day, and um, I was introduced. The concept of Jack's fan, me, was introduced to Tony Visconti, David Bowie's producer, and they were looking for someone to play on some sessions, which, which ended up being the Black Star sessions. And Mr. Visconti called me one afternoon and said, can you show up tomorrow? I can't tell you who the artist is, but we would like for you to come. Uh, you need to go sign a non-disclosure agreement right now, get your contract straight, and then you know meet me at um, the magic shop tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And I was like, oh, yes, Mr. Visconti, of course, you know. Mr. So, yeah, Tony, it's the nicest guy in the world. So I go to the studio, and all of a sudden this gentleman with red hair walks right up to me and says, hello, Jack, my name's David. Welcome to the studio. We're going to have a lot of fun today. Um... And so I spent the next three and a half, four days sitting in that's in the studio, basically with one engineer, one production assistant, Tony Visconti, David Bowie, me, and the drummer Zach. Um, and we produced a bunch of demos, which did not make it onto the recording, but which I now have permission to uh, talk about, it, which became the demos for Black Star. That's um, incredible. Yeah, it's it's really an incredible story. I, I'm I'm really fortunate. Um, you know, to me, he's probably the most, you know, the best musician in many ways imaginable. So um, I don't want to use him. I, I think when I'm talking about this, like if he was sitting right here, would he approve? And, uh, but no, there's a, there's a certain, there is such a, a, a historical marker here. Yeah. In just the story alone, not the fact that you're you. There's no, there's no taking advantage of the story. It's the story. Yeah, it's, it's just what happened. You're, you're, I, you're relating <laughs> a historical moment in your life. I, and that's yeah. all you're doing right um, now. And and uh, yeah, so that's so that's what happened. Um, but uh, yeah, I spent the next couple of days. Um, did that did the, that opportunity, knowing everything that has is a tra- as that situation transgresses, and things play out, and what happens to, to David happens. Did it, you know? And it's been only since January. How has that affected you as a musician, having that experience and? What have you brought that brought into your own? Is that affected your own music and your own your own writing? Um, I I think that um, well the song time uh, the sign the song time on my album time 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 and it's time five times in a row um, was you know I'd started the song before I met uh, Mr. Bowie and Mr. Visconti but um, the lyrics were definitely influenced by by how um, fleeting all of our time is um, and how short life can be and how unexpected. It can be um, sure. So yeah, um, it, it it is it is a big influence and continues to be an influence. Um, you know, and I I've been compared to David Bowie. I mean, I'm sorry, I've been compared to Billy Joel, um, which I I can't deny the comparison of a lot of his early music. Fan? Uh, yeah. I'm, well, I'm a big fan of, and I don't know where like actually my kind of enjoying it that much ends. I think it's like 
as the world became more commercial, I began to not, not like commercial music so much. Sure. But yeah, I mean, as, as, I, as I was telling someone else today, um, like the song, the, what's, what's the album with Captain Jack? Uh, uh, yeah, that one, right? Yes, yeah. I mean, and that is such a piano great man. song. It's like, yeah, and the, and the Piano Man, and it's, it's, rather, it's rather depressive music. It's not happy. None it's, of his songs on that record they're not, were. They're not it was a happy. terrible time. He was, a, he was, you know, egregiously, oh, he was, oh, uh, 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 mm-hmm. egregiously depressed. Admittedly, in interviews later in life, he was overweight. He, he sheltered. He, you saw early pictures of him. He was this guy with this white. He just looked white and bags under his eyes. And he was a young guy at the time. Isn't it funny, Tom? Like, and you could say that he made his best music then. You know, without his, a doubt, at his most depressive state. And that's what, you know, I was, I was telling Gary Tannen um, earlier today, <coughs> I, I feel like a part of my, a lot of, one of the goals of my music is to be relatable to that part of us which everyone has and which everyone is afraid of, that we're all potentially on the, the, the point of panic and ecstasy at the same time sure. every moment of the day, and it's really scary just being alive. Um, so I, I feel like I want to speak to that part of all of us um, as much as I possibly can, which is a very modest uh, contribution considering my, you know, I'm, I'm no David Bowie, but I'm, I'm a big, uh, a, bl- a big believer in, in carrying on and fulfilling your potential and being as, as good as you can be, no matter what you're doing, even if you're working at the 7-Eleven right now. Yeah, well, it's uh, we have a group of things that, you know, make us up and we have our artistic influences and they're all collected inside of us. Yes, and when and when it comes time to us for us to express ourselves, you know, we interpret we interpret our environment, we interpret our surroundings, and what pours out of us sometimes is the that's what makes us great is the fact that we're able to be be creative and use all those things. Um, yeah, and you know, speaking going back to Village Hall, it, maybe the success is what spoils people like us and them. Maybe. You, it maybe, alters, not, maybe we shouldn't it, it, have success. It inevitably, <laughs> it inevitably alters the course of one's life, but it's what that individual does with it once the course is altered. You know, I oh, think I have I've to al- agree with that. I, yeah, I, you know, that's a great point. You know, you can just you can be drunk on it, and it's just like look at look yeah. at the quality of your work. My yeah. God, when you were sad and depressed, you were most amazing, and when you were yeah. rich and crazy, yeah. you were terrible. You were just churning out records and doing what the label told you to do, and, and yeah, and I, you know, wearing I th- the clothes they I, told you to wear. <laughs> I, I don't think any of us are calling Village Olds later. I'm not saying terrible. that. No, no, no. It, 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 but, but, at but at the same time, the same time they're David they're not they're that. not his first albums, you know. Right. And, no, you know, it's like all, all of us, you know. Um, but you know, still really good. If you've just tuned in, we're talking to Jack Spann, whose uh, record premieres this weekend, or this Friday, I should say. The album is called Time, 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 Time. That's right. And we just got through listening to a track entitled Time, and he's here in the studio with us, and he'll be performing tomorrow night at Linneman's, the 21st at 8 o'clock. And uh, so how does, it, how does it now feel to have the accomplishment of uh, a, a CD with your name on it, you know, and, and you've... It seemingly admitted to achieving one of your goals. You know, it's it's a paradox. Um, I I'm really happy, and it's opened up a lot of doors to me. That's good. Um, but I'm also I look back and think, what could I have done differently? What can I do better in the future? How can I make myself not more commercial, not m- easier to buy, but how can I make me me? Which in my case means being like the best and most heartfelt musician that I can possibly be. Is it even possible? I guess I'll find out. I don't know. I don't know. Jack Spann, yeah. thanks for joining us. I really look forward to your show tomorrow night. Thank and, you, and, and enjoy Milwaukee and Lindemans. It's a wonderful place to play. And Gary Tannen, as always, you are always welcome here. <laughs> We're going to close it out with a track from the album entitled Beautiful Day. Guys, thank you very much. And Jack, if people want to find out more information about you, where should they go? They can go to jackspan.com or they can contact me at uh, my name on Facebook, Jack Span. All right. Thank you. Thank you, this John. This is a beautiful day on WMSE. But go tripping on a brand new morning I turned off my little plastic phone Left my watch and my schedule at home Oh, oh, I'm ready to roll On 
such a lovely day like this And everything's bright and amazing down every wandering lane You could not buy a happy world Or the good fine feeling that I have today Such a totally fine feeling that I have to say Such a beautiful day It's a beautiful day Say, yeah. Such a fine, fine feeling that I have 